MTL loader. Now, MTL is the material information used by an OBJ file. You can set colors, specular, emissive, alpha, smoothness, image maps, and their coordinates. So since the default material in an OBJ is a mesh fong material, we can only set properties affecting the mesh fong material. So if you create your OBJ in MTL using Blender, then you can change the base color, specular, emission, alpha, smooth, flat, shaded and also the texture and its coordinates. Okay, so resources will create the models using Blender. If you don't want to use Blender to create the models, you can download the zip file named models2 and extract it into dist client models. Okay, so grab the client script, select all, which is Control A, Control V to paste, Control S to save. If we scroll up, I'm importing MTL loader from JSM loaders MTL loader and you will commonly use it with an OBJ loader. The MTL is the material component. Now going down, we create the new MTL loader, MTL loader dot load, the name of the MTL file, so monkey.mtl. When we create a monkey.obj, Blender also created an MTL file. And that describes the material that goes with the OBJ. And that was created by default from Blender. And Blender, you can see, gives some values with some defaults. We didn't change the material when we created the monkey model in the last video. So that is just a default. And it's named none. Okay, and that's the OBJ. You'll find in the OBJ file a reference to the monkey MTL plus a reference to none. That's because we didn't actually create a material for it. So it's saying use material, none, MTL, new material called none. But we'll look at this in more detail as we progress. Now going back to client, just like the OBJ loader, it has the file to download. It has what to do on success. It has a progress callback and an error callback. Right now, all I'm doing is loading the MTL and doing materials preload when it has fully loaded. So if I just hover over that and look at the signature URL as a string on load, that's what to do when the load is finished. And that's what we're doing here. We get a new object called materials and it is a object of type MTL loader dot material creator. Once the file is loaded, we're saying materials preload. This is reading the MTL files and setting them up as mesh fong materials ready to be used in the next step. And just here, I'm just logging that material. So save that and let's look at it in the browser. We can't see anything yet press f12 and if we look at the console that's me logging out the materials after it's loaded it contains an object of materials with one object called none it's a mesh fong material and it's got the color 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.8 a few other things it's a mesh fong material so it has a lot of properties but the material creator has taken those properties and created the mesh fong material from it so you can see here kd which means diffuse 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.8 color 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.8 Okay, so we don't need that at the moment. Anyway, this is the callback that is run after the file has been fully downloaded. What I'm going to do is now load an OBJ. So OBJ loader, if I uncomment that, that's the same as the last video. We just load an OBJ. We add it to the scene. We have a progress callback and an error callback if we need. Now, just note that these things are optional. So you could actually just delete them and have that. Doesn't matter. Okay, now this OBJ loader won't assign any materials to this object unless you tell it to. So OBJ loader, set materials, materials. And that's the material creator that we just got from the MTL loader. So now when monkey OBJ loads up and it finds this material none, it goes off to the material creator here and finds a material called none in materials there. And we'll use that. That's a mesh fong material. Okay, so just save that. Now go back to the browser and there we go. That's our model using not the default mesh fong material, which is all white, but the mesh fong material created from the MTL file where the diffuse colors were 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. I'll show you that. So if we do console.log object and look at the object that we're adding to the scene now, it's a group with a children zero mesh and it's material there is the mesh fong material 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. There we go. Now that code is working and it's reading the MTL and the OBJ created by Blender. Now we'll go to Blender and use Blender to change the material. Okay, so this is Blender, just opened up, it's all default. Delete the default cube, it's selected, you can see it highlighted by orange there. Shift A, Mesh Monkey. Okay, now we can rotate using the middle mouse wheel. I can zoom in by scrolling it. And also another useful thing in Blender is if you hold down the Shift key and press the middle mouse button, you can pan like that. And if you just put it over there or you lost it, just press full stop and it will go back to the 
center like that anyway let's customize the material here the blender exports so this little icon down here the little checkerboard sphere there press new it's important that your model is selected when you do that the first one that we'll edit is this one here called base color so click that big white bar there and we get a tool to change the color default is that and you can see that it's actually not completely a white that's why we're getting 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.8 anyway i'm going to use a different color i'm going to go green push it up to full these are the numbers if i look at them rgb 0 1 and 0 0.003 let's just make some more variation there so we can see it okay that's very good go back to the model we can't see it in the view but if we press that icon there viewport shading we'll see it okay so now export that file export as wavefront obj to the models folder that our application is using so i'm using dist client models and i'm going to call it monkey obj again export obj in the client script if i look at mtl we can see the kd or the diffuse color which is the color that you intuitively call a color has now been updated so if i refresh that by pressing f5 we now have a green cube in the view children zero material and that's the color down there that we got from the mtl that blender credit for us automatically okay now it looks a little different as 3JS compared to Blender. Blender and 3JS are written by different people and also the OBJ and MTL specs were written by different people and actually many, many years ago. So you won't get 100% compatibility between each of the products and standards, but at least it's an improvement on writing everything by hand. What I'll do now is show you how to modify the specular because in 3JS here, my model is showing a lot of specular, but in Blender, we're not really seeing that. The main reason for that, first of all, if you press no number seven it looks top down so if we scroll out a little bit we see this little image here that is the scene light if you press g while that is selected you can now move it down like that and just put it about there and if you press number one we're looking straight at the monkey once again press g and now move that down and put it about there now if we just press full stop well select the monkey and press full stop we're getting a little bit more specular on the monkey that is now matching the position of the light in my screen it's roughly about that position so we're now getting something a little similar in blender now using these sliders on the right here we can actually modify the specular so down here there's the specular option just there right now it's set as 0.5 i'm going to turn that right up by sliding it a number like that so that's right down or right up i'm going to set it up to one now export as wavefront obj monkey obj and if we refresh that by pressing f5 well it's brighter anyway so that's now set as one the next thing we can do using blender is change the emissive color so down here emission is black right now so i'm going to set it to be a different color so i'm turning that right up and i'm going to use red a reddish color like so and then perhaps reduce the intensity there we go so there's half red and half green so let's export that file export wavefront obj monkey obj okay f5 there we go and that is red emissive behind there now what does our mtl look like we've got a new one there called ke and the values are changing it's quite hard to read we don't need to understand that we're now using blender to make those changes but if you do want to understand that it's here on the wikipedia page there's a link in my documentation if we go down to materials we can see there's ka kd ks ns and a few others anyway let's continue we can also change the alpha so that's this one just here alpha it's one at the moment let's set that down to about 0.5 somewhere around there doesn't really show up in blender but if i export that export as wavefront obj refresh there we go that's a half alpha monkey head now we can see something it's about half opacity so let's look at the mtl okay so it's changed d there that's the opacity equivalent in mtl if you wanted to edit the mtl directly you could so i could change that to 0.1 press f5 and now it's even more transparent but anyway i'm just going to overwrite that change using blender now another option we have for exporting is changing the shading type so this is using flat shading you can see that the the shapes are like big squares with the object selected go to the object option there and down here select shade smooth now the colors are blended between all the faces 
File, Export, Wavefront OBJ, F5. There we go, it's smooth shaded now. And that has overwritten the manual change that I made to the MTL there, since I resaved it in Blender. Okay, so that's very good. Okay, now at the beginning of the video, I mentioned textures. Let's look at textures now. Okay, in Blender, what I'm going to do is create a brand new monkey from scratch. So file, new, general, don't save, it's not important. Press delete on the default cube. Shift A, mesh, monkey, there we go. Now bring this out. Now this little materials icon again, press new. Now, instead of changing the base color, if we press this little dot here, we get options and choose image texture. Let's open an image texture. Now select an image. I'm going to use my image folder there. I'm going to select grid, open that. Okay, so put it back into viewport shading and we can see the texture on the model, right? So we can export that. Now there are going to be several issues here that are common traps for people who are using OBJs of MTLs. Okay, so let's just export that. File export as Wavefront OBJ. So models. This time I'm going to call it monkey monkey textured. Export OBJ. Okay. Now if we look at the monkey textured MTL there, this property is pointing to the actual file. Now this is an explicit URL on my computer. People on the internet aren't going to be able to download that image from your computer. So what you do that will give you minimum issues is get rid of the path altogether and copy this file grid.png. It's actually my image folders there. I'm just going to copy that and paste it into my models there using control C, control V. So in the models folder now, there is a local copy of grid PNG and there is monkey textured MTL, which is referring to that same PNG there. All right, so make sure you save that edit to the MTL file. I'm going to delete those extra windows. I don't need that anymore. And instead of losing our first monkey model, I'm going to just copy that whole section and paste it below. And this time, load monkey textured. MTL and models monkey textured OBJ and also position the object along the X and extra two, well 2.5 for example. Okay, so now that's updated. This monkey is the monkey texture that we created in Blender and it's downloaded the grid.png and here on the right here is the second model, children zero material, it's a mesh fong material. It has some values, but it also has a texture there, which is an image. And, and that's its current source, just there. So it was found in models grid PNG. The MTL file is just saying grid PNG, which means the same folder where it finds monkey textured MTL. Okay, so just be aware of that when using OBJ and MTL, these kinds of errors are very common. Now let's just look at the texture coordinates. With that model still selected, scroll that bottom window up and select UV editor. Now in this drop down here, select grid, right? So you can zoom out of that by using the scroll button. Now with that model selected, press edit mode. And what it's doing down here is showing all the coordinates of the model. It's been unwrapped using a certain technique, which you can update and modify yourself. But you can roughly see the shape of the monkey. Like you can see two eyes there, and you can see there perhaps the ears, and that is the head unwrapped onto a flat plane. And you can see that the texture will match those there. So one of the eyes is consisting of these squares. So if I zoom into that, where you can see they're both using the purplish colors, the visible part of the eye is the internal bit there, like so. But anyway, you can modify each of these points. So for example, if I box select the eyes like that, and I press S to scale, I'm just gonna scale them. Well, it looks like I've grabbed an extra vertice there, but it doesn't matter, this is just a quick example. I'll put that there, now I'm gonna move G. I'm gonna make them all red and I've kind of made a bit of a mistake there this is quite a hard task texturing a 3d model but anyway as you can see as I move these around pressing G you can see that the texture of the eyes is changing anyway I'll just put it there export that wavefront obj monkey textured if I refresh that f5 okay so it says here it can't find that grid file so I need to go back into the MTL and just delete that reference there there we go F5 there we go it's found the texture again and you can see my eyes are, are red now 
Anyway, Tech Swinger model warrants its own video. I've just introduced that to you anyway, so that you have some understanding of what's involved. Excellent. Anyway, so that's the MTL loader and how you most commonly use it in 3JS. In the next video, we'll look at the GLTF model loader. Excellent.